What's up guys, Leopold the Brave here, and wow, have we got a video today. So last night I was talking with my friends over on Crossover X when the idea of a Punch-Out cartoon popped up. Okay, in reality, I was lonely and just spewing Punch-Out cartoon ideas in the text chat because no one else was online. But people eventually did come online and started chipping in with the ideas. And one of my ideas was to have Doc Lewis be the star of the cartoon instead of Little Mac because I just find him a much more interesting character. He has a mysterious past as a former heavyweight champion, and he's quite eager to train Mac when typically mentor characters are quite hesitant. So then I really began to theorize on Doc's past and what's going on, even down to why he likes chocolate bars and the mysterious warehouse where him and Mac train in. So I hope you're ready. Let's try and figure out why everything is the way it is in Punch-Out. Since I brought up those two minor questions like why Doc likes chocolate bars or where he trains, let's go into why Doc stopped boxing because that feeds into both of those. My theory is that Doc never wanted to stop boxing. He was forced to quit. Picture this, Doc Lewis just became the heavyweight champion. He's super proud of his title and decides to relax now that he's finally reached his goal. Unfortunately, he relaxes and slacks off a bit too much and starts to lose some serious weight. Officials will warn him that if he doesn't bulk up soon, he'll be moved down a weight class and lose his belt. And so, to fix this, Doc starts scarfing down chocolate bars, trying to gain some fat that he can turn into muscle. Due to this unhealthy decision though, Doc loses his title defense match and sustains heavy injuries, forcing him to retire. As you can imagine, being forced to retire at the top of his game would have Doc completely mentally destroyed. He'd keep scarfing down chocolate bars thinking, All I need to do is bulk up. Let me fight. I can still fight. But due to his heavy injuries, Doc wouldn't have the stamina to turn the weight he gains from his chocolate comfort food into muscle, leading to the pudgy Doc we know today. And there is lots of evidence in Punch-Out to suggest that Doc was heavily affected by some past injury. In the Punch-Out Wii demo titled Doc Lewis's Punch-Out, Mac gets to spar with Doc in the ring. Doc will exclaim various things like, You're too fast, when talking to Mac, and he sounds seriously hurt, like, Ow, Mac, when you hit him. Plus, Doc is the only fighter besides King Hippo that quits after one knockdown. I mean, being retired is one thing, but there's definitely something else going on here. But the story does also explain why Doc is so eager to train Mac. Doc still wants to be back in the game so badly, and training Mac is the closest thing he'll ever get to boxing again. Speaking of training, what exactly is this old warehouse that Doc and Mac train in? I mean, think about it for a second. There's a lot of boxing supplies in there. It has its own ring, punching bags, boxing gloves, jump ropes. It even has lockers. Doc couldn't and wouldn't have done this just for Mac. That stuff has been there, and Doc knew about it. My theory is that this warehouse was Doc's old training gym. The gym he trained at during his journey to become the heavyweight champion. But when he was forced to retire, the gym would go out of business. With the lack of any big names there, people would show no interest in coming to train there. The place would have to shut down. But you know what? I think Doc had a happy ending. Look at the ending to Punch Out Wii. This room that Doc is in. I think this is a room in the exact same warehouse they were training in. After retiring, Little Mac would say thanks to Doc Lewis for all the training by donating his winnings to Doc, allowing Doc to reopen the gym as its new owner. But that raises another question. Why did Mac retire so soon? To figure that out, we're gonna have to go to the past again. Doc Lewis's forced retirement would impact a lot more than just a gym. Like, what about his fans? A fan. Mr. Sandman. That's right. Growing up, Mr. Sandman would be a huge fan of Doc Lewis, even inspired to box himself. But after Doc Lewis's injury forces him to retire, Mr. Sandman's passion for boxing would burn even brighter, wanting to avenge his favorite fighter. He was determined to get that belt and keep it until the day he dies for Doc Lewis. But then Little Mac shows up, trained by Doc Lewis himself. Mr. Sandman would become extremely conflicted. Is he fighting for Doc or against him? This mental distraction would cost him the fight, not only having him lose, but also getting severely injured just like Doc Lewis. When Sandman wakes up in the hospital and is told by doctors that he shouldn't box anymore, Mr. Sandman decides that he's not going down the same way as Doc. Late at night, he'll break into a secret room in the hospital and destroy his medical records before breaking out of the hospital. On his way out, he'd see a poster of Mac on the brick wall of a building. 
His legs and everything else from the waist down may have been severely weakened due to his injuries, but Sandman was going to prove to himself that he could still use his fists. He punches through the brick wall and demolishes the building overnight. Later on, he returns to the boxing league and fights Glass Joe again. He wins, but realizes during the fight that he clearly isn't fit to box anymore. But he doesn't care. He knows he'll never make it back up to Mac again with his current injuries, so he begins to cheat his way back up. Oiling up the mat so Piston Hondo's speedy feet slip on it, paying Super Macho Man even more money to throw his fight, bribing King Hippo with food, you name it. But when he finally does make it to Mac where he plans to cheat again to take his belt back, he sees Doc Lewis. As a huge fan, he knows deep down that Doc would never ever cheat to get to this point. So Sandman drops any intentions he had of cheating and decides to take on Mac fair and square. During the fight, his injuries really begin to take their toll and it becomes clear to everyone. But it's too late. Before the towel could be thrown in, Mac punches Sandman in the jaw, making him spin around before Mac strikes the back of his neck. With the damage already done to him, this final blow would be enough to permanently paralyze him from the waist down. Mr. Sandman. He let his motivation become an unhealthy obsession, and he paid the price. And that is why Mac would choose to retire early. After paralyzing Mr. Sandman, he'd realize that the damage he does goes far beyond just the ring. For example, Piston Hondo's loss to Mac could bring shame and dishonor to his whole gym. And Soda Popinski's losses to Little Mac could cost him his government funding for his training program. Credit to Pineapple Guy Carmine for those two ideas. So yeah, Little Mac, who would have lost maybe one or two times at this point, would realize that he's doing a lot more damage than he thought. Then he'd decide that his next loss would be the one to end. It. And of course Doc wouldn't be happy at first. He was forced to retire and was building Mac up so Mac would never ever have to face that. And then Mac just chooses to retire, at the top of his game too. This explains Doc Lewis's little outburst in Punch Out We. Are you sure? Three losses and you wanna call it quits? But it wouldn't take long for Doc to understand what Mac was feeling and decide to help him go out with a bang. Not to mention, Doc would also finally find peace in his own retirement as well after seeing Mr. Sandman get paralyzed. He realizes what he could have lost if he just kept boxing like Mr. Sandman did. Mac then goes in for his final fight, having a gut feeling that he's not gonna make it, but still trying his best anyways. Mac gives it his all but ends up losing his final fight against Bald Bull, the one who cost Doc Lewis his final fight, as it's implied they had some history together. So now with a smile on his face, Little Mac is done. He gets Doc his gym back, thanks him for the training, and pays Mr. Sandman's bail as it's likely he got arrested for destroying that building I mentioned a while ago. Mac hangs up his gloves and goes down in history as one of the greatest boxers of all time. And that is what I theorize the full story of Nintendo's Punch-Out is. Good job, son. Good job.